Well, guys, we got a little bit of U.S. Mint news to talk about. Uh, one late breaking piece of news from the U.S. Mint actually came in the form of an email. God bless her heart. Um, they have announced that they will be doing another collaborative project, um, this time with the Royal Mint, on a future release sometime this year. Okay, exciting. I, I actually I actually enjoy the collaborative um, Mint ventures. Um, the, the one with the Royal Canadian Mint was pretty good. I actually enjoyed it. Um, the, uh, what, what was it called? The, anyways, it, 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 there was a silver eagle and a, a really neat maple leaf, uh, that were included as one set. And, um, I, I was going to call it the tale of two mints, but, but that's, that's not the name of it. Uh, anyways, here is, um, a look at the email. Um, the U U.S. Mint and the Royal Mint today announced the collaborative design created by both Mint's chief engravers for the 2024 Liberty and Britannia programs. Uh, following a successful joint project in 2021, featuring the 400th anniversary of the Mayflower Voyage Coins and Medals, which was, I thought, pleasing, pleasant, the U.S. Mint and the Royal Mint are working together once again on a different type of project. This one features a unique design collaboration between the chief engravers of two of the world's largest and oldest mints. The collaborative design features Liberty and Britannia, which I'm going to say they're probably two of the sexiest designs for Lady Liberty and Britannia. I, I, I'm going to say that they're, they're pretty nice. Um, two historical themes featured on many coins over the years, but never together on one unified design. That's going to be awesome. American Liberty, historically represented by a woman in her many variations, represents that bedrock value that is so important to Americans. She has appeared on U.S. coinage since the early years of the nation. Britannia, a staple on British coinage since the late 1600s, has long been the national personification of Britain. Often the symbol of maritime power, this allegorical image has come to be a symbol of national pride and unity. And it goes on to kind of explain everything, the collaboration of the chief engravers and um, things like that. <coughs> we understand that there's going to be both Lady Liberty and Britannia designed on one coin. That's going to be kind of cool. Um, hey, bravo, mid-director Gibson. Uh, the, this is actually a pretty good one. Um, and I figure we go ahead and kind of lead the video off on a bit of good news. Because what I have to deliver from the U.S. Mint, I'm not particularly fond of. I, I am not McLoving this. Um... And we haven't done a proper 2024 U.S. Mint product release catalog review. We're not going to do a whole review on the whole year, obviously, because a lot of the stuff hasn't been shown up on there conceptually with designs and pictures and little pop-ups and all that stuff. We're just going to take a look through the first month because there is something... Uh, uh, quite nefarious that, I don't know. It, it's like when the Mint makes an announcement of a collaboration with the Royal Mint, eh, that's awesome and all, you know. But you figure there's always something dumb waiting in the wings that negates this good news. <sighs> Anyways, this release today... Um, and there's press releases and things like that. If you didn't get it on your email, you can certainly go to the U.S. Mint website and read all about it. All right. So we're at the U.S. Mint. We're at the 2024 product schedule page. And right out of the gate, the big topic of conversation, which came out a few days ago, a buttload of different Harriet Tubman commemorative coins 
Um, yeah, now they're going to be jamming this in our face. And don't get me wrong, okay? I think Harriet Tubman's probably one of, one of the most well-known, important historical figures in in America, right? It's, it's, she helps shape, you know, kind of where we're at right now with a lot of things. Uh, the history, human rights, and everything. Um, and abolishing slavery and all that great stuff. Um, but the U.S. Mint and apparently the BEP, we're, we're going to be seeing more of this figure here. And uh, I, I'm okay, but you got to get it right. And the pricing has to be, it has to be good, all right? It has to be at least serviceable for a lot of collectors. And unfortunately, the news that I'm here to deliver to you today is that the prices are not very good for collectors. We'll get into this here momentarily. So the U.S. Mint had offered up a number of different listings and packages for the Harriet Tubman commemorative coin release. There's a proof $5 gold coin, okay, which is fine. There's a clad proof half dollar, which has a face value of 50 cents, and mostly the copper nickel clad coins all have this 50 cent face value. Um, you could go to the store and actually use it as a half dollar. There's the proof silver dollar, which is really made of triple nine fine silver. And what they also did was package them all together, all three coins. Three, I had four fingers up, but it's three. All three coins in one package. So if you wanted one of each, fine. You could go ahead and, and order the package. Um, I don't think there's really any distinguishing value there if you bought all three coins as as a package deal as opposed to buying each one individually there might be a few bucks but it's nothing really to write home to mother about okay this is not something you scream about so they've done two different iterations um for the strikes they did a proof strike uh and they also did the uncirculated strikes which has more of the traditional kind of like business strike satiny surfaces to them all with the same designs, and then that that three pack is missing from here. They don't have a three pack for the uncirculated coin part of the release. So in all, there are seven unique skew numbers for the Harriet Tubman release. Now I did bring up the BEP. Okay. They they are going to replace Alexander Hamilton on the ten dollar bill with Harriet Tubman, yeah. So there there is that again, and um, whatever it, it's it's I guess it's fine if it's done right it's fine, and um, out of out of the three, my favorite has to be the silver dollar um, design wise. It features a young. Uh, a young Harriet Tubman on the coin, which is attractive. Um, you got the holding hands on the reverse, you know, and then you have the big dipper on there, United States of America. Um, One dollar face value, triple nine fine. Um, there's some of the specs. It's not quite one ounce of silver, so it's not, it's not specced out to be the same as the Silver Eagle. These things never were like that. They were always 0.8 something another fine or uh, troy ounces. They're triple nine fine silver. But as you can see, $82 price tag on the silver proof. If we checked out the uncirculated version of this, you're going to see that comes in five bucks cheaper. Okay, so that's, that's kind of like the... Um, uh, the trade-off here with this is that if you grab the uncirculated, boom, you, you save a few bucks, okay? Um, 400,000 mintage limit. There's no household order limit. You get to order all 400,000 pieces if you so inclined. The proof version uh, has 400,000 as well. Uh, let's take a look at the gold because I'm going to leave the best for last. Uh, the gold... $718, okay? It sounds like 
a good amount of money. It's a little bit more limited mintage at 50,000 pieces. These are triple nine or these are 90% gold, 6% silver and, uh, and the rest copper. Um, the finest weight is around a quarter ounce. You know, it's got a pretty stiff premium on there, but <clears throat> the premium <clears throat> isn't nearly as glaring as it is on the silver. The silver, <clears throat> for what you're getting, you're paying about 3x what melt value is on the coin. <clears throat> uh, but on this one, um, not my favorite design. Um the the reverse is fine. Uh, it looks good. It's very uh, the the reverse is very lifelike. You know uh, the hand even has like you can see the bone bones in the hand, the veins and all that. This is more kind of like the the best shot of what a a realistic reverse is. But it 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 misses the mark combining because uh, this is clown shoes right here the the obverse design of this one is not the best look for harriet tubman it's just not and uh you know the 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 stiffness here is that you're paying a couple hundred extra bucks for the premium but this is not the worst of it it's not all right here's the uh uncirculated this one is 10 bucks cheaper um same mintage limit, 50,000. But here you go. You guys ready? This, my friends, is what's the big problem in 2024. Do you know what this is? This is shit. This is what this is. This is the copper nickel clad half dollar Harriet Tubman command. $47. This is, ladies and gentlemen, the one I'm showing you is the uncirculated version, not the proof version. To make matters worse, it's got a blisteringly eye watering high mintage of $700. And 50,000 pieces. Like you're going to find 750,000 people that want to buy this. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? The design straight up blows. This is the worst iteration of Harriet Tubman that I've seen. Someone had mentioned that she looks like friggin' Bill Crosby on this thing. Or Bill Cosby. Uh, this is This is a bad coin ladies and gentlemen this is not a good one right here the design on the reverse is kind of meh you know um the the designers and engravers did not do this coin justice and then all that for 47 freaking dollars holding us hostage as collectors Oh, by the way, for two bucks more, you could get the same thing in proof. $49. What if I told you 10 years ago, you could have gotten a silver triple nine fine commemorative for about the same price just 10 years ago? Guess what? The price of silver was no more than what it was in 2014, folks. $49. And you're getting the worst design out of the bunch. I'm not knocking on Harriet Tubman. You know, she'll look at this coin and think to herself, damn, that is not me. That's not me. That's terrible. This is not a good design. Uh, the silver is a very good design. Whoever did that one did a really good job. So I got curious, and some of you may not know about the Federal Register. They're the Daily Journal of the United States government. All right. So you can always go back in here and 
read up on some old notices and press releases and things like that going back X amount of years, however long you want to go back. So we're going to take a look at the U.S. Mint website in 2014, March 20th, 2014 to be exact. Guess what? The pricing for the 2014 National Baseball Hall of Fame Commemorative Coin Program Silver and Clad Coin Options. Do you guys remember this project? With the curved coins, they're really pretty. The Baseball Hall of Fame, they have the catcher's mitt on one side. And then you turn the coin over where it's rounded and then you have the stitching of a baseball. My goodness, what a great looking design. And it's a very popular one, even out in the coin show circuit. Like if you found one of those, people are asking all the money in the world for them and people are paying them too. That's a great design. All right, so there is the prices. There's the issue price. There's the introductory price. I, I'm kind of right here. You see the silver commemorative Hall of Fame coins for the uncirculated $47.95 and the proof $51.95. Just a few bucks over what the Harriet Tubman is. That's for the silver. And then you see the regular issue price there of $56.95 for the proof, $52.95 for the unk. Go down just a few lines. The cheaper prices that you see there at the bottom is for the clad version. The 50 cent face value clad commemorative Hall of Fame baseball coin. Do I even need to say this? 20 bucks? I mean, are you out of your mind here? 10 years ago? Which is not that long ago. And I don't want to hear about no inflation. Not when it comes to copper and nickel. There is no inflation whatsoever. So why are they selling these things for two and a half times what they were going for 10 years ago? That's what I want to know. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, the crux of evil when it comes to the U.S. Mint. It's that they justify the price planning of everything that comes out today based off of what they sold it last year for. It's like we can't sell it for what we did last year. We have to bump it up $2. If they bumped it up $2 for every year over the course of 10 years, there's your 100% markup. Why is this happening? This is a travesty on the hobby. It's a travesty on what the U.S. Mint was originally known for, and that's getting collectible coins in the hands of people that not only want them, but also deserve a reasonable price. $47, $49 for today's commemorative copper nickel clad, which has some bullshit composition in there, right? There's a reason why people hated it in 1965, we're still hating it today in 2024 for almost a $50 bill. So this pretty much means in 2025, when they ramp up to that golden hour, 2026, with the semi-quincentennial thing, the Drummer Boy 2.0, does that mean they're going to issue those at 60 bucks a piece? It's sounding like a ramp up at this point in anticipation for probably the biggest release of this decade. There's no one in the right mind that's going to pay $50 for that coin. And you have the gall to shove 750,000 pieces, thereby cratering whatever possible numismatic value it might have. You know, it's it's like, it's a, it's a fool's bet. It's a sucker's bet when you have to lay out that kind of money. And then a year later, your coin is a, is a boat anchor. You know, it's worth 20, 25 bucks. And then for the people out there that want to buy three, four of them to give out as collectibles, as gifts, it, it is oppressively 
expensive. And this is just a testament to the, the just the unnecessary inflation on some of these coins. That's why I wanted to talk about we're at 20 minutes into this thing. I'm not going to beat a dead horse because the horse has long been dead for quite a while from the U.S. Mint. Hopefully this Royal Mint, U.S. Mint collaboration goes true. And I can't wait to see what comes out of that. The only thing I'm not waiting for is that price tag or the mintage. Uh, our fine director, God bless her. She's a very nice woman. Uh, she has blown up the, the mintages on a lot of things over the last year or two. Uh, but also blew up the prices as well. And it's just not justified. So that's why I wanted to talk about. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I hope you guys are having a great day. I got to get ready for my whatnot stream. But please do like, share, and subscribe if you enjoy today's content. This is the Market Hour featuring the U.S. Mint product. You guys take care. Have a great day. And I will see you on the next coin video. Peace.